Hey guys, I just finished doing this evaporator coil and the video was meant to be a short video showing how easy it is to remove the TXV and leave the piston that comes with the replacement coil because of these threads. You got threads on the end of the both ends of the TXV and a nut on the liquid line so you can just leave the piston in there. So it's supposed to be a simple little video that shows how easy it is to convert these coils. But in the end, I had multiple difficulties pulling a vacuum. And one of them was the Schrader just tore apart when I removed it and I didn't realize it. So I had to open the system back up and pull a vacuum. I actually sealed off the compressor, pulled a new vacuum and then opened it back up but yeah this took me a long time and this is at the house that had the um the lady called the fire department this is the repair to that house here it comes happened here.
I wanted to add anytime you have a line set coming down like this there's a potential for oil to be trapped right here and it can flame up really bad that's why I keep this <clears throat> it just made more sense to unbraze that excuse me guys because of how much room I have right here I didn't have I could have repiped the whole thing yes but I wanted to unbraze that but because of this situation I did bring my fire extinguisher in here <laughs> I don't have but one weld joint in here I tried to push that back and we got to just solder up that right there
I think I'm gonna clean that up on the bottom a little bit, but it's a good solid joint. This coil came with a piston. As you see, I'm gonna leave it in there. This is the new O-ring that came with it. Make sure that's in there. There's no O-ring on this. Always start with your fingers. It's, that's aluminum thread, so it's easy to cross thread it. enough on this one I really wanted to focus on doing that evaporator coil because we went from a TXV to a piston with those coils that come with the piston and the threads line up so it's really easy to do I have been doing a tightness test and bubble search I'll try to put a video of that bubble search but everything's doing good we are fixing to pull a vacuum on this thing I just hope after all this work I've done in here there's a there's a significant portion of the work that's out here that I'm I just didn't really I wanted to focus on the coal because the liquid line dryer is on the inside of this we had to recover the freon pull this out open up this pull off the top it's a good bit of work and yeah i could have moved the dryer out here but after all that work why not just leave it where it is so we're fixing to pull a vacuum Let's go see how my tightness test is doing. Uh, this is going to be a challenge. I can't close off that. I can't. <clears throat> yeah, they're not going to make this easy, are they? I have refrigerant boiling off in the compressor. I can see it starting to ice up. So um, I'm going to be here for a little while. Mm -hmm. y'all remember this used to butt up against here now it don't all right I had a problem out here that right there I'm having to start all over I'm gonna try to show you what's in there can y'all see there's a piece of my Schrader stuck in there So we're fixing the start up. After a whole lot of stress and time spent on this, I should not have had to 
two, two and a half hour job. It's taking me a whole lot longer. But we are finally up and running. We do not have a TXV. So the subcooling doesn't really count as much as the superheat. It is 75 degrees in there. And out here it's 60. So that superheat should be lower. That's what I ended up with down there. I had to put this on and make sure it wasn't leaking and then, you know, deal with my Schrader on that end and pull it back in. I almost capped the dang thing off because I have a true suction, but I didn't have to. Okay, we're down to 57 degrees and a 10.4 10 degree superheat. So we're doing a whole lot better. If you don't have one of those, one of these little pieces, you can use something like a swivel tee and accomplish the same thing. So that's it on that video. Like I said, I meant for that to be just a short little video and maybe it does turn out to be short, but those are some of the problems we come across. And that's why I always estimate four hours anytime I open up a system. A two hour job can turn into four really quick and it may not be your fault. So I appreciate y'all watching the video and I'll catch you on the next one.